Good morning, lovely souls. Tim Wilde, Friday Ascension update. And I am in the woods this morning, as you can see where I usually am on a, on a Friday and a Monday, enjoying the slightly cooler weather. It's, uh, I understand that the heat wave or the two days of summer that we had has now moved into Europe and it's warm. I actually have been tuning in to what is the beginning of the Lionsgate. Okay, so I'm just, just double check my watch. Yes, it's the, 20, it's the 22nd of July today. So we are about to walk into the Lionsgate. We're about to move into this, this period of time that is known as the Lionsgate. Now, the 8th of the 8th is the target date and a lot of people say, well, that, that's the gate, that's the portal. But in my experience and having worked within and around the Lion's Gate since, since the cosmic moment, the 21st of December, 2012, it can run for three to four weeks or it does run from three to four weeks. So you have the opening of it or the beginning of the energy around the time that the sun moves into Leo. And then it gen tends to generally kind of fade out, shut down, kind of basically back off and move into the next kind of phase of energy around the end, of the, the sort of like the third week in August. My information is that it kind of peters out around the 14th or the 15th this year. So by the time astrologically that the sun has moved into Virgo, it will be it will it will have done its work now this year is a very significant year it's exactly halfway we are exactly at the halfway point through the transition from 3d to 5d so at this exact halfway point things are changing the boundaries of energy that we're working with are changing and one thing that i've been very guided to do this year which I'll be absolutely honest, I haven't done on the other years, is enjoy. <laughs> enjoy this period of time. Now, I say that, you know, almost with a sense of humour because the other events that we've experienced have always been so intensive and tough. And there were years that I'd walk out the other side of, of the Lionsgate curtain and think, thank God for that Virgo energy. And I'm a Leo myself. I should technically, by all means, be absolutely thriving during this period of time. But this is this is how we've been. This is how we've experienced our upgrade decade, and it is a decade of upgrades. Now we've had since the beginning of all of this ascension process really kicking off in 2012. In order to implement the changes that we've we've implemented and to go through the shifts that we have personally gone through we've had to make huge energy steps in a very short space of time and that's pushed us okay it's in order to drop the karma to change the habits to open the heart to navigate away from the ego ruling our personal lives and also on a structural societal level <clears throat> we've had to go through change after change shift after shift and the work has been personal it's been deep it's been intense and our physical mental emotional ex and spiritual experience of our planet our lives our personal universe has completely changed it's unrecognizable what I always like to do is cast an eye back, backwards, not living in the past, but just look at where, say, I was or where we were, where you were this time last year. Just tune into it a minute. Just have a tune into the energy. Think about what you were feeling, what your focus was, how your energy was, what you were learning at the time and compare it to your view on your current situation how far have we moved in a year okay how far have we moved in that cycle of 12 months since this time last year 
And I think you'll find that the energy comparatively is unrecognisable. These are very, very different years that we're experiencing. 2020, 2021, the two years that will forever go down in, in galactic history as, as being the most notable and change-worthy years that, that, that we've, we've witnessed energetically. And now, as we're in 2022, even though we're still witnessing all of the kind of the same games going on in 3D, the same show, the increase in the carnival activity, our attitude or our vibration or our association or our attachment to it has utterly completely changed. Are you still being triggered by the same things that you were a year ago? Are you able to navigate the tests and the situations that you are being presented with now in the same way that you were a year ago? Can you hold more light? Are you able to find peace within the centre of the storm? All of these things, if you look at it, look at it now, as we are on the eve of this very, very powerful spiritual gateway, I think you will find that you are unrecognisable now in comparison to the way that you were a year ago. You might look the same, you might feel the same, or you might have made personal changes, who knows. But energetically, you get up every morning, you view the world, you put your feet on the floor, you go through whatever motions that you go through to raise your vibration and, and move yourself into centre. But we're not the same. We're totally different now, okay? So the jump, the jump and the progress and the shifts that we've made in, that, in this, what doesn't feel like a very long period of time at all, are phenomenal, they're massive. And my guidance is now to drop the preconceptions or the, almost the trepidation of moving into these events with the preconception that I or we are going to get hammered by this energy. We've, because we've hit this halfway point, because we're here now, because we've done the, the grittiest and the, grind, the, 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 the most grindy part, we are now being requested or we're being asked or we're being offered the opportunity to begin to enjoy our process more, okay? To actually enjoy it to live our daily lives in a state of heart-centeredness. Now, <clears throat> although that heart-centeredness has been a craft, it's been an art form that we've, we've had to relearn again. Not that we were ever, you know, that, that's, our nat that's our natural state. Our natural state is a fifth dimensional heart-centeredness. But we spent so long in 3D, we spent so long in that third dimension, incarnating again and again, relearning, learning, going over the same stuff, playing out karmic roles, being part of the third dimensional matrix that we'd completely forgotten how to do it effectively on a daily basis, or had so much programming placed on top of what we do Oh, little ant, I hope you don't jump on me. Place, had so much programming placed on top of what we do that it became very difficult or almost like a, like a, like a sub-nature to be in the heart. So we're being asked now to fully immerse ourselves and engage in a process where we move through this energy gateway in a state of bliss, no preconceptions, no, no kind of almost what I call a bit of light work of doom mongering, where it's, 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 you're expecting to be tired, you're expecting to get hammered by the energy, and, and, and therefore it's almost like we talk ourselves out of the state of feeling good before we actually even have the opportunity to experience it. So this gateway is massive, it's big. It sees the end of the storm layer, which was set up exactly three years ago. Three years ago. Now, now, again, you know, casting 
casting my mind back to the late July 2019. It's not just three years ago, it's another universe, okay? Now this is a concept which I've had coming up recently. It's being echoed in conversations that I've had with people that I, I work closely with. I'm also seeing it being placed around in, in pools of thought that our universe has completely changed. Now, have a think about it. Have a think about the way that you engage with the outside world. Have a think about your vibration. Have a think about the vibration of the people that you interact with, that support you or you are supporting. Everything has changed. Everything has shifted now to the point where our inner reality is now becoming, or our outer reality is now becoming a reflection of our inner process, which means that you are in a different universe. <clears throat> that universe has changed completely. And sometimes if we look to the stars, if we look to the sun, the quality of the light has changed. Time is passing differently. If you take if you take a few moments during your day or maybe even half an hour or an hour to go and walk, looking at the leaves, looking at the plants, everything is shining differently. The leaves are vivid, they're bright. If you tune into them, you can see the energy around them. Animals have become far more psychically communic psychically communicative or well, maybe that's us maybe we've just reached their level maybe we've we've raised our game enough so that they are able now to communicate with us we're receiving messages from the ascended masters the heavenly realms the angels the dragons the unicorns and these are very distinctive messages but they're coming in far more subtly they're coming in in a way that we might not have expected them to previously. The ways that we used to read energy, that we perceived everything around us with our, with our third eye, kind of like, you know, geared up for 3D, that's completely changed. So everything about your universe is different, okay? We are in a different universe. You are in a different universe. And the more of us that are collectively focusing on this, the more of us that are experiencing this shift from ego to heart, the stronger and the more distinctive and more unified the experience of this universe will become. <clears throat> so truly, our, our perception of reality matches our heart vibration, okay? That heart vibration is very high now. It's matching the beat of the cosmic heart. And that's coming in at a tenth dimensional frequency. Tenth dimension, again, the, the dimensional frequencies you talk, you, you hear me talking about 5D, 7D, 9D, all of these, the, the, the numbers are irrelevant, okay? It's a vibration or a dimension is defined by the, the speed at which the light vibrates, what it, what, what it creates, the, the effervescence or the quality or the luminosity of the light, which is immeasurable. Our human minds attempt to put everything into kind of boxes so that we can understand it. But in actual fact, that's not the true nature of things. Energy, when it vibrates at a low frequency, forms solid, solid objects such as the world of 3D. When it vibrates at a higher frequency, it becomes, uh, it, its form could be described as liquid light. So it forms whatever, it, whatever it's being projected into or whatever the creator wishes to manifest. The light matches that picture and begins to form it, which is why, you know, we have all of these memories of instant manifestation, the abilities to do things, the, the, the you know, the, the, the holy grail of creating our, rea our own reality at the highest frequency possible. And the only obstacle between us and achieving that has been ourselves, our programming, our experience. So here we are, 
halfway through this ascent, this this shift from 3D to 5D, the ascension process, I'm already encouraging every single one of you and myself to regard ourselves as ascended masters. Once you've adopted a responsibility and a role, no matter how humble you might feel within yourself, no matter how many tests you're going through, the fact that sometimes we might wake up on certain days and not feel like stepping up, not doing this, but we do it anyway. Okay, the quantity of things that we are learning and the speed at, we are, the speed at which we are achieving what we're set out to, setting out to do on this planet, we are all going to, at the end of this, achieve our goal and we are going to be celebrated for doing so we're going to celebrate ourselves we're going to celebrate together we're being cheered on <laughs> by like you know like the cheerleaders in the heavenly realms are so behind us with our task that it would seem when you when you tune into the gravity of the energy that's backing us up at the moment it's, it's a task that we cannot fail, but the only trip up, the only thing that ever stands in our pathway is ourselves, okay? So on this date, on this moving into the lion's gate, set yourself some intention. Set yourself an intention to fully, fully immerse yourself into the energy of this lion's gate but, uh, but intend to love every second, okay? So there's many, of, there's many of us that kind of, I think it's almost, I think it was the Mercury, I think it was Mercury retrograde that started the habit, or it did, it did for me, where everybody's like, oh my God, it's a Mercury retrograde. We're going to get hammered, you know, like, you know, hide, hide everybody. It's like reach for the Hagen dars hide inside and don't come out for three weeks because everything's going to go wrong the car won't start the computers won't work you're like don't don't sign any contracts don't make for me it's actually been quite the opposite it's like actually i really enjoy these periods it gives me the opportunity to look at the things that i need to look at it actually gives me the opportunity to maybe step back and and take some time or to review a lesson that has been <laughs> as as they invariably do kind of repeat repeating itself over and over again let's enjoy what we're being presented with let us integrate this light formulate and construct whatever new reality that we've agreed to because everything that we're doing at the moment is via soul contract according to the atlantean ascension goal print the atlantean community goal print is what we are ultimately working with. That's the energy that we've aligned ourselves with. We might be doing this simply because of the call of our soul, but we are part of a team. We're part of a unit. We're part of a huge global movement of energy, which is coming together to form this higher reality, this higher picture vibrating at a fifth dimensional frequency, wherever this may take us, whatever it means to be part of this, we are being driven by an incredible guiding force. Now, I was overjoyed to take part in, in the fifth event of the, the One Unity Generation series that I'm doing with Mir Kafkios. And having the dragons step through now the drag the dragons or the dragon forces as they first introduce themselves cover a, a the there is the same quantity of dragons around earth and around the universe as there are angels and archangels they literally cover all aspects of energy cosmically and earthly and 13 very beautiful dragons stepped forwards to provide a blessing. Now, sometimes they are very, very active and are very, very involved in the process that we are going through. Uh, other times they tend to be kind of like 
not in remission, but just stepping back, doing other work. For this period of the Lionsgate, we have got the most incredible, the most incredible amount of dragon activity and support coming through. So take a few moments to connect to them. Okay, take a few moments to actually see where they are, what they're doing, which particular type of dragon might be wanting to connect with you, whether they are around you all the time or whether it's not a concept or a form of energy that you've connected with yet and just allow them to flow in and just take a little bit of time with them, okay? Because the dragons in particular, the ones that we are the closest to will be the fourth dimensional and the fifth dimensional dragons. Now, a little bit of history. When Atlantis fell, the entire dragon realms were offered the opportunity to take their ascension. You know, like, so you don't have to experience this 10,000 years of 3D like the human beings are. You can, you can this is your golden ticket out. And what will always seem so remarkable to me is the fact that they said no. They said no, we're going to stay. We're going to stay, we're going to occupy 4D bodies, which mean they are just above our range of perception. So we can't see them, but we can feel them and we can psychically sense them. But not tangible, not touchable, like my crystal or me at the moment. And they chose to stay alongside us for the duration of the 10,000 years where we were completely unaware of anything apart from our own survival, our own existence, and the few glimmers or the shafts of light that were coming in from the spiritual world. And it was in 2014 that these dragons, the 4D dragons, were oft offered their ascension or their Christedness, their Christed role. And many of them took it, but they didn't go anywhere. They stayed right here. And there are billions and billions of dragons all around us occupying these, a lot of them that you may, you may have had your personal dragon if you're associated like an earth dragon, an air dragon, a fire dragon or a water dragon or any of them offer, um, occupying the spaces or the roles with the other elements. And then all of a sudden overnight they might have changed colour. They might have gone from say an emerald colour to a golden emerald colour because they've accepted this Christed role. They, they've gone, okay, now's the time. I will walk through the Ascension Gateway. I've learned enough and I can stay here and I can still continue to assist. The backup that we have is incredible. Okay, so take a moment, wherever you are, if you are tuned into or you get a few minutes to just say thank you to them because we're going to have a lot of help going through the next two to three or maybe four weeks as we're clearing this energy, the storm layer decommissions and we set up something fabulous, new, shiny and bright for the next period of time. So that's it from me today. I'm going to be working with the wonderful Mir Kafkios on the 27th of July, which is next Wednesday, I believe, in a ceremony to open the Lion's Gate. It's called Opening the Lion's Gate and that's our workshop next week details will be below in 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 the blurb after the video sending you all loads of love and i'll be back on monday have a beautiful weekend bye for now